All right, good evening, everybody. My name is Chris Pollock. I'm the Director of Communications and Marketing here at Wells College, and I'm really glad to have you all here tonight. Um, on this call, we have uh, a multitude of folks from Wells who are gonna go into the reopening plans. Uh, for now, I just wanna let you know that we are recording the session and we're gonna post a link on our YouTube channel afterwards so that anybody who couldn't attend can also watch. There will also be a Q&A afterwards where you'll have an opportunity to submit your questions in the chat box. Um, by the way, I also wanted to invite any parent to join our private Facebook group for parents and guardians only. All you have to do is just search Facebook for the phrase Wells College Family and you should be able to find it that way. And um, on that note, I would like to introduce our president, Jonathan Gibraltar, who will welcome you as well. Good evening, everybody. And it's uh, my pleasure to connect with all of you. I wanna say happy new year to everybody, to our students and their families. And I'm really excited to welcome you back to a new semester at Wells. I know this winter break has been much longer than you're normally used to having, but we're all very much looking forward to starting our semester in just 11 days from now. We hosted a similar virtual presentation last August, and we got a lot of good feedback from parents and families, which is why we wanted to connect with you tonight. Although most of your students were enrolled at Wells in the fall, you're going to notice a few differences regarding COVID-19 protocols on campus. So tonight we brought together members of my cabinet and our student affairs team to walk you through the process of returning to campus and how students and families can best prepare. Certainly you don't need me to tell you that this past year has been unlike any other, probably that any of us can remember in our lifetimes. All of us, all of you, we've all faced unbelievably difficult challenges during this pandemic, which has upended almost every part of our world. It's inconceivable to me that the very first case of COVID-19 was identified in the US on January 19th, 2020. And now with more than 100 million cases worldwide, so much has changed in these past 12 months. Working remotely, caring for our families, figuring out Zoom and Teams and other technology, and the variety of mental health issues associated with almost a year of social isolation has been hard on all of us. Like every other college and organization, we struggled a bit at first to find our way during these times. I used to joke that my least favorite word these days was pivot. And my second least favorite was you're on mute. But that's exactly what all of us have had to do over and over again since last spring. The silver lining, however, is that last fall, Wells College proved the naysayers wrong by showing it actually is possible to operate a residential college with classroom learning in a safe and productive way. During the fall, we had only six cases of the virus among our students on campus, and none of them, thankfully, had anything more than mild symptoms. We proactively tested everyone on campus frequently, and we intend to continue weekly COVID testing, and you'll hear more about that in a minute. I know many of you are likely wondering about when your student, and perhaps even you, will be likely to get the COVID vaccine. And as you may know, New York State is currently experiencing, like all other states, a major shortage in vaccine supplies. And it may be several more weeks before the state can ramp back up their large scale distribution. But at the very least, New York has included teachers and professors who are teaching in person in the list of those currently eligible. As soon as that eligibility pool is widened, to include college students, we'll do whatever we can to get access to vaccines. But no matter what happens with the vaccine this spring, we know that we must still practice wearing masks, conduct our weekly testing, continue social distancing, and we will continue to have available space in Judge Hall for isolation and quarantine only if we need it. This all goes to show that 
Wells is above all a tight knit community where people truly care for one another. I'm really looking forward to seeing our students back on campus in a few short weeks. And I'd now like to turn the program over to Dr. Kenyon, our Dean of Students and the rest of his team. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, President Gibraltar. And Wellsians, where have you been? We miss you. We're lonely without you. And we can't wait to have you come back and join our community in just a few more days. We're guaranteeing you a great experience when you come back to Wells. And we're gearing up to make that happen for you. And we, I know that uh, many of you probably have some concerns about how we're gonna handle the safety upon your return. So I'm inviting our COVID compliance officer, Jonathan Rowe, to give you a briefing on what to expect uh, before you leave and when you arrive. Jonathan? Thank you so much, Dean Kenyon. Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Jonathan Rowe. You can always reach me at jrowe at wells.edu. Uh, just as all of my colleagues here, we are highly accessible and we're always here for you. I'm really excited to um, announce and talk about our Wells Together approach to reopening campus. Our goal is always to provide a safe, secure environment for all of our students to pursue their educational goals. And so I'm excited to announce along those lines that we are able to continue regular COVID-19 testing throughout the spring semester. And in fact, we're able to do even more than we did in the fall semester. We're moving to the rapid antigen test and we will be implementing to that um, at Wells College. And there are a number of advantages and reasons why. Number one is we'll be able to scale up and test everyone who's a part of our community weekly and even sometimes more than weekly. And that's more than the twice or than the once every two weeks that we did in the fall semester. We will also be able to conduct what's called adaptive COVID-19 testing. And that's where we test special populations to make sure we control any potential COVID-19 outbreaks. With the rapid antigen testing, we're going to get quicker results and we will be able to perform quicker actions. Um, this will lead to uh, faster contact tracing, faster isolation, faster quarantining. Again, so we prevent COVID-19 outbreaks versus waiting for two, three, four days to get results back from, from other types of tests. And then finally, the rapid antigen tests are compliant. Uh, they are uh, compliant with local, county, state, and federal guidelines. We are implementing this under the leadership of our community medical center, uh, which is right off campus and is a certified, um, a certified lab uh, to, to be able to uh, carry the, these tests out. Um, it, they are also approved and, and with support of, our, of Cayuga County of the state of New York, and they have an emergency use authorization from the, um, from the federal FDA. Uh, other COVID-19 mitigation efforts that we will be continuing to implement and sometimes doing uh, an, an even increased uh, amount of implementation this semester um, are the dedicated contact tracing, dedicated isolation and quarantine support. So at other colleges and universities across the country, some of the contact tracing and, and quarantine or isolation student support comes from outside groups, such as a county health department or other um, you know, affiliated groups. Uh, we have special permission from Cayuga County Health Department to be able to assist them with the contact tracing of our students and of our student populations. We're gonna continue with the daily symptoms screening that's required for everyone, faculty, students, staff, 
to, to perform every morning. And it's very, it, it's key that everyone um, is very mindful and checks their daily symptoms and is able to get support if they're not feeling well in the morning uh, before exposing others. And then finally, prevention efforts are key. Uh, the three W's, wearing a face mask, watching your distance and washing your hands frequently. Uh, that's the message we get from the CDC, from the state of New York, the Department of Health from the state of New York. And that's what we're going to carry out at Wells College to make sure everyone is safe. All students that come into campus um, uh, as they uh, re-enter re campus um, in, in the next week will be re-signing or even signing for the first time the campus pledge where they commit to these COVID-19 mitigation efforts. Um, and we'll be aware of the uh, compliance uh, uh, challenges that will come from that if they, uh, if they don't uh, succeed in doing so. We also have a COVID-19 dashboard that's on our website that's open for all. So everyone can see uh, the amount of tests that we perform uh, and then any positive cases and results from that. Uh, and we're as transparent as possible uh, following under uh, New York State guidelines and Cayuga County guidelines. Um, regarding that, I get a lot of questions from students about vaccine planning. And so, you know, as you know, so in the state of New York, um, under phase 1A and phase 1B for who is eligible for the vaccine, uh, in this state, there is 7 million uh, individuals that are currently eligible for the vaccine, but the state of New York is only getting currently about 250 vaccines roughly a week. So, you know, we do need to be patient. We need to continue to promote and uh, follow COVID-19 mitigation efforts. But when it gets to the point where our students can get vaccinated, we're working with the Community Medical Center and the Village of Aurora and other outside groups to create a, a way for our students to get um, vaccinated uh, whenever, that, uh, whenever the students are eligible and whenever we have that supply. Uh, under State of New York guidelines, you do not have to go, if you live out of state, you do not have to go uh, to your home state to get a vaccination. You can get vaccinated here in the state of New York. Um, some of you are from outside of the state of New York and border states of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Vermont. For those students, you've received information um, already and, and you can reach out to us if you need that again to uh, move back to campus on Tuesday, February 2nd. At that point, due to New York travel rules, you will need to quarantine for three days. You will have taken a COVID-19 test um, in, your, in your home state, and then you will come to New York, come to Wells College, come to campus. You'll move straight into quarantine at Dodge Hall until this coming Friday when you will receive um, your second COVID-19 test, again, per New York State uh, travel rules. If you are a student from inside New York and those border states, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Vermont, then, you're, uh, then it's pretty simple for you. You're just coming back to campus on Friday, February 5th or Saturday, February 6th. And as you get to campus, we will have COVID-19 re-entry testing from one o'clock to five o'clock in Stratton Hall, third floor atrium, the same place where we had it uh, most of the fall semester. There will be an email going out with a, a chance to sign up for a, uh, a time slot to get your COVID-19 test at that point. So I just want to, before I pass on, I just want to encourage everyone to, to uh, continue to follow COVID-19 prevention and mitigation efforts. We are truly all, all in this together, wells together, and we need to continue to support each other through this challenging time. So I'm gonna pass on now to our wonderful Director of Residence Life, uh, Ms. Vanessa Tackman. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, we miss you. I just wanna say we are so excited to have you back on campus. Jonathan and I have been working closely to make sure your arrival is safe and comfortable and pleasant. So all of the students should have received an email from me to sign up 
for a time slot. So if you are out of state, out of border state, you would be arriving on February 2nd and you should have filled out that form for your certain time slot. And those students have been emailed more information about what quarantine and Dodge looks like and how to get their meals. So within that email, there should have been a link to do the day before to make sure you get your quarantine meal sent to your room. Um, also for the in-state students or border states, you also have signed up for your February 6th, 5th and 6th time slots. So you are all good to go. Like Jonathan said, we will be sending you more information. Um, the students who are quarantining, your, you would have been emailed an individual email from me. If you haven't yet, it is coming um, to pick up your keys from campus safety. And then they will, you can go into your room and just quarantine for the three days, make sure you do your meal plan the day before. Um, and then testing on that fourth day for those students, which um, if you have any questions, again, please just send me an email. Those doing any room changes, you will also be receiving an email from me to do your COVID test first, then go to campus safety to pick up your keys and then you can start changing over to that new room assignment. There are not many of you, but we do have a couple. So any questions, again, please send me an email. I will be happy to help out any of you with anything. So as far as programming goes, I just wanted to do a little plug to get you excited. Um, for From February 8th and then seven days from on, um, we are doing a scavenger hunt, a virtual scavenger hunt through our Instagram page and more information is to come soon but we'll be posting clues every day for students to go and take a picture of yourself near the clue. And then you will be entered into a random drawing to win gift baskets daily. So we have pretty good gift baskets. We have a game night gift basket, candy gift basket, uh, a Wells gear gift basket, an at home basket. So get excited because I'm very excited for you and I wish I could win, but I can't win. So participate, it's gonna be fun. Um, and then also just, Throughout the semester, we are going to have some MADFIT. If you don't know what that is, it's a workout video from this uh, woman in Canada. Um, she does like 10 minutes strength to up to 30 minutes to up to an hour of physical activities. So we're going to make it virtual for all of you to participate and then possibly do some winnings if you do participate. Um, we also have about 15 RAs coming back with us and they will all be doing about five programs per semester as well. So those have not been decided yet, but if you would like to tell your RA what you, what you would like to see when you come back, please let them know and they would be happy to assist you with that. So we're very excited for you to come back. If you have any questions relating to housing, you should have gotten a couple, multiple emails from me now. Those who haven't signed up for a time slot, um, I emailed you again to ask you to please sign up. And then, yeah, we're just really excited to have you back. Send me any questions that you have. And then I will pass it over to... I'll pick it up here, Vanessa. <laughs> thank you. And thank you, uh, Vanessa and, and Jonathan. Uh, really, uh, your life uh, is about to get better when you get to Wells. You're going to be able to see your friends who we've not seen for quite a while. You'll be able to go to class, which you will do, go to class every day. You'll go to class and you'll do the work or else. We want to see you be successful. We want to see you be happy with the life you have in our campus community. You'll be coming back during Black History Month. Uh, even before you come for classes, we're going to have some uh, opening ceremonies for Black History Month next week uh, before classes begin. And we'll have movie nights. We'll have game nights. We'll have uh, podcasts and lectures and programs for students to get involved in uh, outside of class and to challenge your uh, thinking and reflections inside of class. Uh, so we've got a, a wealth of opportunities and activities to make your spring semester start with a real bang. So look, we look forward to seeing you. We, we want you to look forward to coming back. So. Uh, with that, I'll let uh, Professor Pollack uh, take over the meeting. That's very kind of you, President Kenyon. Um, also, I would like to have one of those candy baskets. I, anyways, 
Um, so it's now time for Q&A. We already have one question in the chat, but that is in fact the easiest way is to just type your question in the chat and we will read it out loud and uh, get back to you. Uh, the first question is from Ms. Lisa Franklin. And she asks, are students from outside of the state of New York required to take the COVID test within three days of returning to campus or are they required to show a negative test within three days of returning? Um, Jonathan Rowe, if you could handle that. I, I know we don't know exactly which student, uh, which state we're referring to, but if you can just maybe generally speak about that a little bit more. Sorry, thank you, Chris. Uh, yes, so it, it depends on if you are from the state of New York and a border state. So as I said before, if students are uh, outside of New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, or Vermont, outside New York and the border states around New York, then you are supposed to take a COVID-19 test at your home state within three days of leaving for the state of New York and fill out the traveler, the traveler health form on the New York State uh, travel uh, website. When you get to the state of New York and Wells College, then you will uh, go straight into quarantine for three days on campus in Dodge Hall. And on that fourth day, we will provide you a COVID-19 test uh, to fulfill those requirements. Uh, again, that is only if you currently live or, or are outside the state of New York and a border state. If you are within, if you are in the state of New York and in one of the border states, then all you have to do is come to Wells College and get tested when you get here. Great, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, the next question is from Nikita White. Um, she's asking, are commuters from New York required to have a COVID test before coming to campus? Now, I think that the key word here is commuters, students who do not live in a residence hall. Okay, I'll take that one as well. So commuter students that don't live in a residence hall can get tested when we start uh, weekly required testing for our whole on-campus population. Now I'm assuming from the question that you will be um, coming to campus in some form uh, that you're not just virtual. If you're virtual, you, you don't have to. But if you are a commuter student coming to campus for classes, then you will start with regular uh, weekly uh, COVID-19 testing, which will start on Monday, February 8th, and Tuesday, February 9th, both from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m., and that will be the weekly COVID-19 testing schedule for the rest, rest of the semester. So that's the weekly schedule for everyone who's a part of our on-campus community, meaning they're visiting campus in some form, uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, 1 o'clock to 5 p.m., uh, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. starting that first day of classes. Thank you again. Um, so this question I think is uh, either for Vanessa or Charles. Uh, Laura Gates Lupton uh, is asking, will move in procedures be the same as in the fall? In other words, with parents unable to help. And just as a reminder, in the fall, we did allow one adult or you know other family member in the residence hall at the same time as the student. I know that some people were not uh, terribly thrilled about that. Um, and Vanessa and Charles, can you let us know if there's any change to that procedure for move in? So since this isn't, all of the items should be left in the rooms. So students who are coming back to campus should be just returning to their rooms. If they need a parent to help them with anything, send me an email. But since we are coming back for spring, most of the student items and the larger items should have stayed in the room. And if you don't have a warm jacket, bring one. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's fall, see? So uh, I'm wondering, actually, I'd like to also just uh, introduce a couple of people we, I neglected to before. Uh, we also have Cindy Speaker, who's our provost and uh, dean of the college, as well as Michael Lindbergh, who's our athletics director. 
Um, Mike, I'm wondering if you could just give a quick overview of, you know, what athletics are looking like in February and beyond and, and what, you know, the status is, the, stat, the status of a potential competition. I'm just going to stop talking now. Thanks, Chris. And, and thank you, everybody. You're looking forward to having everybody back to campus. Uh, there were a couple of things that needed to happen for us to restart athletics. One was access to testing and another was access to an opponent. Okay. So I'm very pleased and I'm very thankful to the work that Jonathan has done and President Gibraltar and Kevin have all done to secure the testing that we're going to need so that we can begin the resumption of play for uh, athletics. I will be meeting with each of the uh, uh, teams individually over the next week or two to outline the process and the protocol that we'll be uh, using to, to restart our athletic program. Uh, winter sports, unfortunately, uh, that decision was made earlier. Nothing has changed there. We are hoping to resume practice. And our plan is, I should say, is to resume practice and hopefully maybe able to get a contest or two in. Um, but as you know, a lot of uh, surrounding conferences have essentially shut down their, their programs for the season. So we've been placing an awful lot of our work on what we're going to do for the spring sport. So softball and uh, lacrosse and baseball, uh, we are planning on a conference on conference play. Uh, we have a schedule uh, planned. Uh, we have a testing process and protocol that's in the works and, it, and, and it's going to be started. A little more detail that we have to get into, but I will, and I've been working with your coaches and we'll also be talking with you um, individually as a team related to specifically to the, um, the processes and guidelines we have to follow for each team. So that, that'll be coming up over the next couple of weeks. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate it. My and, pleasure, uh, Chris. <laughs> Dr. Speaker, can you tell us a little bit about if there's any change to procedures with classroom instruction or you know remote versus in-person? Sure. So. Um, the majority of our classes are actually being held in person. Um, a grouping is held hybrid, which is a combination of in person and remote. And then we have a handful of classes that are fully remote. Um, students should make sure they check their schedule on the globe. We've had to readjust class times in order to ensure that we're make, uh, meeting New York State requirements um, in terms of the length of a semester, given the additional week that we extended uh, winter break. Um, so we adjust the class times a, a bit. So double check class times, double check your rooms as well. We'll continue to make adjustments. Um, if enrollments are changing and a room um, it becomes too small for the enrollment, we'll have to change because the in order to be compliant with the six feet social distancing um, that we established in the fall in terms of their classrooms, um, we're really making sure capacities are not exceeded. Um, so there might be a room change um, after you know the first day of class or something like that. So always check your schedule on the globe. Don't take a picture of it on your phone. Actually log into the globe to see it live and real data. Okay, um, so that's important. Um, so because we were able to extend class times, we don't have to extend the semester a week. So we're staying with the same end of the semester date. Um, which has final exams end on May 14th. Um, and that's scheduled because we have taken out spring break, right? So we start classes on February 8th, classes run through May 7th, and then a week, um, Monday through Friday, the following week for final exams. Great, thank, thank you so much. And I just wanna add, I know it's, maybe some of you aren't too happy about not having spring break, but I, I really do think that not having a fall break in the fall was a big part of us being able to keep the virus off campus for the most part. Um, uh, we have a question uh, about our professors and teaching staff being tested upon arrival on campus. Jonathan Rowe, can you take that one? Uh, yes, so as I said before, our weekly on uh, our weekly COVID-19 testing for everyone who is a part of our on-campus um, environment. So meaning visiting campus in some form. So it's all faculty, staff, students, both residential and commuter. Um, that testing will start the very first day of classes 
on uh, Monday, February 8th and Tuesday, February 9th. One of the, again, one of the um, extra advantages of um, moving to the uh, antigen rapid testing is just that we can control more of the logistics of when we do COVID-19 testing. We received some excellent help um, with some of the outsourcing that we got of COVID-19 testing last semester, but we were, um, we, we, were, we were not able to dictate the actual schedule uh, just because of the, the needs and, and challenges of our testing providers. So in this case, we will be able to test Mondays and Tuesdays uh, throughout the spring semester. And that's really important to do that at the beginning of the week um, for the whole campus population, on-campus population. Great, thanks so much. Um, there was a comment in the chat from Sonia about the bathroom conditions and especially in a you know time of a pandemic, can we do something about keeping them cleaner? I know President Gibraltar already jumped in and mentioned, you know, if the restrooms are in bad shape, please let residents' life know immediately. Um, Vanessa, is there anything you wanna to add to that about how students can report, you know, substandard conditions or anything like that? Yeah, definitely email me or Sarah, the residence hall director, with that information, and we will get that taken care of. Great. Uh, we have a question from Elizabeth Purcell, just a follow up for uh, Jonathan Rowe. Just to clarify, we are not being tested the day we arrive, but the Monday and Tuesday of the first day of classes. Okay, so um, again, I'll just uh, reiterate that faculty and staff um, live off campus. So when they come here on Monday, February 8th, Tuesday, February 9th, and get tested at that point, they are getting tested when they're coming to campus. So we, we need to keep in mind that um, re-entry testing uh, that term is for students that live in our congregal housing, and those are what are deemed as hot spots regarding COVID-19, any type of group or congregate housing. And so that's why we do that extra testing for those students that are coming to campus. But for uh, faculty and staff who go home every night, we are continuing the surveillance testing for all of those individuals, everyone who's a part of our uh, on-campus environment uh, so that we can prohibit and prevent COVID-19 outbreaks. And, and to follow up on a question that we had in the chat earlier about the rapid tests, we know one of the nice advantages of that is it is a nasal swab, but it is a shorter nasal swab that is not nearly as invasive as the, the truly horrendous ones. And the other advantage is that um, the person being tested is actually the person doing the swabbing. Um, so there's a lot more control over it. It's not, um, it's, it's much less unpleasant. <laughs> um, we had a question about senior week. Um, Lisa Franklin is asking, are seniors still going to be able to experience senior week? If so, what activities might be scheduled? Well, the schedule will allow for senior week, and we are expecting that students will be planning the senior week uh, activities as they always do. Uh, so we look forward to working with collegiate cabinet and the class officers uh, for the senior class to develop the appropriate uh, senior week program, uh, given the conditions that exist uh, by that time. Uh, it may vary from what we have today, and hopefully we'll have more flexibility. And I, I also want to just follow up and Jonathan, make sure it's clear, students who arrive on February 5th, will they be tested on February 5th? Students arrive on February 6th, will they be tested on February 6th? Or will they be waiting until Monday, February 8th? Would you clarify? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, Reentry, campus reentry testing is for students that live on campus in our congregate housing. That is occurring on February or on Friday, February 5th and Saturday, February 6th, depending on which day you are coming into campus. Uh, and that was through a sign up with Residence Life with, uh, with, uh, with our director. Um, so that is campus reentry testing. And again, campus reentry testing is for students that live on campus. Um, 
surveillance testing for everyone who's a part of our on-campus environment starts Monday, February 8th and Tuesday, February 9th, also from one o'clock to, to a PM to five o'clock PM. And the re and so, you know, faculty staff are not, uh, they go home every night. So they are not part of our congregate housing. So they are not part of our campus reentry testing on that Friday and Saturday, but will be tested weekly um, as part of our surveillance testing throughout the semester. Great, thanks very much. Um, there's a question from Sonia Gilks about uh, what can we do to support the mental health of students if there's not going to be a spring break? And I, I'm not sure who wants to field that one. Well, again, we're working closely with our uh, partners at the Community Medical Center and also with a uh, therapy group in Ithaca Mindwell Center. Uh, they'll be coming to campus to do a series of workshops uh, throughout the spring semester to help students uh, gain skills with handling uh, issues related to their mental health. We know it's going to be uh, a taxing time, but that's why we're building in a, a number of uh, what I would call uh, opportunities for students to relax, uh, to uh, be with each other, support each other. Uh, I'm sure we'll have uh, uh, therapy animals on campus for petting uh, uh, be, when during midterms, before midterms, that's always pretty popular to have the uh, a doggy de-stress day. Um, but other things, uh, and really we want students to let us know what concerns they have when they have those concerns, because we're gonna be responsive to the needs our students have. So we really invite you to, to speak up, let us know how we can be helpful for you. And there, uh, Jonathan Rowe, there is a follow-up question about um, the group B students, uh, from if you're from New Jersey, um, do you have to test three days prior to the scheduled arrival date of February 6th, in addition to moving in, you know, the, the campus reentry testing? So this is one of the border states. Right. So um, if you are coming from a border state, uh, New Jersey um, uh, is that. That's a wonderful question. I know this really does get confusing. Um, and I, I just want everyone to know that we are glad to answer these questions time after time after time, because it, it, it is, it's not just confusing for you all, it's confusing for a lot of people uh, in, in our country, uh, the different rules of federal versus state versus county. So I just want you to know we hear you. Uh, but yes, New Jersey is a border state, so there is not any extra New York uh, travel rules associated with it. Um, you can uh, uh, come into New York in the state of, uh, or in, in Wells College uh, at your, uh, at the time you signed up to move back in, which is either Friday, February 5th or Saturday, February 6th. Great, thank you so much. Um, I would actually like to turn this back to President Gibraltar because I think we're just about ready to conclude our presentation for the evening. I just wanna say thank you to all of you for joining us this evening. And um, you have all of our contact information and we encourage you to be in touch. We're looking forward to having you all back. And I think we've got a good plan in place, but I will say that a plan is only as good as people following it. So um, we're really gonna ask people as we did in the fall to be really cooperative. It seemed as though at times uh, there was concern when people wandered off campus to other colleges. And so it's really important that you just kind of hang in there because, you know, uh, we all want to have a successful semester. And if at all possible, our seniors want to have an in-person graduation. And of course, that's going to be up to New York State, not as much up to us. But, but we're planning on an in-person graduation, and we're hopeful that there will be one. So, um, you know, uh, spend the next couple of days really looking inside of yourself and thinking about um, bringing the very best of you to campus. As Dr. Kenyon said, study, 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 go to class. It really matters. You have to do your work. 
That's why you're here. It's your full-time job to be a student. And we're gonna do everything we can to try to build some enjoyment and fun into this time. And there's one thing, more thing that I wanna leave you with. You know, this has been almost a year that we've been dealing with this, but I think that there's a lot of hopefulness and optimism that by the fall of 2021, that this coronavirus uh, pandemic will be behind us, that we'll be able to return to campus fully in person with all activities and athletics back in full play. So hang in there with this for a little bit longer, come back with um, optimism and hope and everybody just do the right thing and we'll get through this. So thank you all and we'll see you in about a week. Safe travels. Thanks Bye -bye. everybody. And we'll also certainly be sending more information by email to the students and, and families. Like Jonathan said, uh, it, is, it is hard to keep anyone's head around all this ever-changing regulations, but we'll get through this together. Thanks very much for coming tonight. And thanks very much to my fellow panelists. I really appreciate it. Um, you can always email us at communications with an S at wells.edu if you have any further questions. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Here.